Hello, friends. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we have an exciting update for you as King Charles III and Queen Camilla embark on their highly anticipated royal tour of Australia and Samoa. This visit marks an important milestone for the king, as it is his first time in Australia as sovereign. We'll dive into all the key details, from their engagements with local communities to personal moments that made the visit memorable. But before we get into all the exciting royal details, don't forget to subscribe to our channel, give this video a thumbs up, and hit that notification bell so you never miss an update on all things royal. Plus, we'd love to hear your thoughts, so leave a comment below and let us know what you think about the royal couple's latest tour. King Charles and Queen Camilla officially began their public engagements in Sydney on Sunday, October 20th, during their royal tour of Australia and Samoa. After arriving on Friday, October 18th, and taking a much-needed rest day at the historic Admiralty House on Saturday, the couple kicked off their tour with a warm and joyful visit to St. Thomas Anglican Church in North Sydney. The royal couple were greeted by hundreds of well-wishers who had gathered to catch a glimpse of the king and queen. King Charles, 75, expressed his excitement to be back in Australia, referring to the visit as a great joy. After years of visiting the country in various royal capacities, this visit marked his first as king. The church service, attended by many locals and members of the congregation, included some special moments of personal interaction. The couple were welcomed by Archbishop Kanish Graffel, and King Charles had a touching reunion with his former polo teacher, Sinclair Hill, and his wife, Wendy Hill. It's clear that these personal connections to Australia are deeply cherished by the king. As the king and queen made their way through the church and greeted onlookers, the rector's wife, Ellie Mantle, presented King Charles with a delightful gift for his grandchildren, Prince George, Princess Charlotte, and Prince Louis. The gifts included a rugby ball, a cricket ball, and a stuffed koala, a heartwarming nod to Australian culture, and a wonderful gesture toward the next generation of royals. It's a great honor for us, Mantle said, explaining that this was the first opportunity for the Australian public to officially see the king and queen since Charles ascended to the throne in 2022. After the service, King Charles shared remarks with the congregation and proceeded to visit the New South Wales Parliament House at 11.50 a.m., coinciding with the 200th anniversary of the Legislative Council of New South Wales. During this historic moment, King Charles presented Ben Franklin, the President of the Legislative Council, with a special gift, an hourglass that the King jokingly dubbed a speech timer, adding a touch of humor to the event. In his address to Parliament, King Charles expressed his deep affection for Australia and its people, saying, What a great joy it is to come to Australia for the first time as sovereign and to renew a love of this country and its people which I have cherished for so long. This tour marks the 17th time King Charles has visited Australia, but the significance of this visit, his first as monarch, made it particularly meaningful for both him and the people of Australia. While the royal couple's visit has been highly anticipated, it comes at a time when King Charles is managing his health carefully. Earlier this year, the king received a cancer diagnosis and as a result, the couple's schedule has been adjusted to accommodate a lighter set of engagements than usual. While the king and queen will still attend several public events, Charles is expected to pause cancer treatments while abroad and is traveling with two doctors for his health support. Despite this, the royal couple have made a strong commitment to engaging with the public and participating in significant events. Their time in Australia is packed with both public and private engagements, focusing on important causes close to their hearts. Looking ahead, the royal tour will continue with some exciting engagements. On Tuesday, October 22nd, King Charles and Queen Camilla will visit the Sydney Opera House, one of Australia's most iconic landmarks. They will also appear at the historic Man O' War Steps, where they will review the Royal Australian Navy fleet and witness a defense force flyover, an exciting display that will certainly draw a crowd. These engagements, though fewer in number due to the King's health, are nonetheless important and provide an opportunity for the public to connect with their monarch. The Sydney Opera House visit, in particular, is expected to draw a significant number of royal fans. 
Although the public engagements are somewhat limited, King Charles has been actively involved in private meetings related to important causes. He has already toured the National Botanic Gardens in Canberra and had a discussion with scientists at the Commonwealth Scientific and Industrial Research Organization to tackle the issue of wildfires, a significant threat in Australia due to climate change. The King also met with leading Australian cancer doctors who specialize in treating melanoma as part of his ongoing commitment to raising awareness about the disease. His focus on health and environmental issues reflects his long-standing passion for causes related to sustainability and medical research. While King Charles is busy with various engagements, Queen Camilla is also making her mark during the tour. As a patron of the domestic violence charity Give It, the Queen Consort will take part in a panel discussion addressing the ongoing crisis of domestic violence and the support provided to vulnerable individuals. Additionally, Queen Camilla, who has long been an advocate for child literacy, will meet with children participating in a Commonwealth Reading Challenge. Her commitment to literacy programs is a central part of her royal work, and her visit is expected to bring attention to the importance of reading for young people in the Commonwealth. To round out their time in Sydney, King Charles and Queen Camilla will attend a community barbecue celebrating Australia's cultural diversity. This event will provide an opportunity for the royal couple to engage with various community groups and learn more about the rich cultural landscape of Australia. They will also meet with Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander representatives to gain insight into the experiences and traditions of Indigenous Australians. This meeting is a key part of their commitment to learning about the diverse communities that make up the country and fostering deeper connections with its people. After their time in Australia, King Charles and Queen Camilla will travel to Samoa on Wednesday, October 23rd. There, King Charles will participate in the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting, Siege Chichem, as he serves as the head of the Commonwealth Association of 56 Nations. This meeting will be another opportunity for the King to address important global issues and further his long-standing relationship with Commonwealth nations. As King Charles and Queen Camilla continue their royal tour, what are your thoughts on their engagements and the special moments that have made this visit so significant? Let us know in the comments. Do you think King Charles is managing his health well while balancing his royal duties? We'd love to hear your perspective. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, like this video, and ring the bell for notifications so you never miss an update. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.